This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Mike Sedita. Hello out there. Welcome to episode 71 of the Good Neighbor Podcast. My name is Mike Sedita, and I am joined today by Jay Ellison. He is the owner of Echo Benefit Solutions. Jay, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome, man. How are you? I'm doing really good. Thanks for being on with us. I, you know, you and I had met, um, you know, at a, at a meeting and I, I talked about the Good Neighbor podcast, but I didn't really get into what it is. So just so you kind of have an understanding and the people listening can get like a baseline of what we do is um, the Good Neighbor podcast was started in 2020 in Southwest Florida. A gentleman by the name of Charlie McDermott during social distancing when we couldn't get in front of businesses and families said, how can I get businesses out into the public or philanthropic and charity groups into the public? And the Good Neighbor podcast was born. Now, three years later, we have podcasts all up and down the East Coast, all over the U.S. And I'm fortunate enough to be the person here in Tampa that gets to talk to business owners like you. And, you know, the first question we always start out with is just tell us a little bit about Echo Benefit Solutions. Well, I do. And thank you for the opportunity before I go too far into insurance nerd material here. But, uh, you know, I do I do insurance. So there's two basic kinds. There's the homeowner and uh, auto insurance, which everybody's mad at right now. That's not what I do. Um, I do the Medicare health insurance um, and all that kind of stuff, which everyone will be mad about in the fall when open enrollment comes around. Um, So, yeah, I do that um, primarily Medicare in Florida because, you know, our average age in Florida is about 300 um, and. you know, health insurance, you know, the salary by supposed to have it. Um, so I work with uh, families, individuals, small businesses, you know, anybody with it uh, that doesn't already have it figured out. And so, so when you say families, small businesses with the families, it's really just like uh, kind of caregivers making sure mom and dad have the insurance they need to take care of them into their golden years. Is that kind of your ideal person? Or when you're talking about businesses, it's businesses that are just planning for down the road. Like who, who is the garden variety on those? No, that's good. Um, so um, people over 65 have Medicare. So if they have caretakers, then I can help them understand what their mom, dad, grandma, what their benefits are and how to, how to get the most out of them. The people that are under 65 need to take care of themselves too and have insurance because we all have to go get annual physicals and be ready for the unexpected. So everybody has to have something in place just in case. And then as far as businesses go, um, a lot of businesses provide some level of, of health benefits to their employers or employees, because it, it's really hard to keep employees nowadays. So anybody right. that I know that runs a business is just pulling their hair out, either trying to find people or keep people. Right. And one of the tools that you have to do that is some level of benefit, even if it's not full, you know, kind of bumper to bumper health benefits, some some measure of that. And I help I love working with, you know, like five, 10 person business to start with to help them do that, because, you know, they work their butts off to apprentice people and 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 bring them into part of the team, make them part of the team. And then they lose them, you know, to, you know, mega company X because they get health insurance. Yeah, I mean, that's that's probably one of the biggest things, right? Like it, it, there was a stretch of time here about two and a half, two plus years ago, where you couldn't find people that wanted to work. First off, it was people wanted yeah. to stay home and kind of live off of things. Yep. And then when you were getting people, it was competitive because it's like, oh, shoot, I need to have bodies to operate my business. And now you're offering this. You then invest a bunch of time to train that person and do all the things that need to be done. So this is kind of, you know, you're going in and saying, hey, look, let's get you the most comprehensive plan so that. Your, your employees are covered and it's a benefit to them, but it's also not breaking the bank for, you know, John Q business owner. Yeah. Yep. And it's all, all levels, all sizes, all budgets, you know, they can do something, you know, and it's, the conversation's free, you know, we can, we can figure out if there's anything they can do. And a lot of times that they, they might not be able to do it right now, but they can grow into it in a quarter or two quarters to try to hang on to those people. You know, it, it's a, it's a running a business is a daily struggle. And then as a, you know, to a periphery of that, is there like, um, cause that's, you know, benefits is kind of like falls under the same umbrella as like human resource type thing. So do you work in conjunction with somebody that maybe does like, if I'm a small business and I'm growing and now I'm 10 employees, now I need to have HR, I need to have payroll, I need to have benefits. Do you have like a, 
for lack of a better term, like a, a power team that you work with for those other things? Or do you kind of farm that out as it comes? Yeah, I, I do, actually. And uh, like some of the people I enjoy working with the most are the the other people that you mentioned that are in that space because it, no no one person or agency handles all those things. So a lot of time, my first point of contact at a company will be um, the HR rep that um, that you know I get referred to them, and I go to meet with them and like, all right, well, let's what what are we looking to do? What what are your goals? What do you you know? And I don't even get to budget. Like we'll get to budget later, and try to figure out you know where they need to go. And um, but I have other partners that you know that do the payroll and all those kinds of services. And those are, um, you know, all of these services are commodities of a sort, you know, so it's it's uh, being able to set yourself apart by understanding why they're doing what they're doing and what their goals are and, and how they're trying to take care of their people. Or some of them aren't. Some of them are just go through the motions, but I, I'm, so those aren't the ones I like to work with. But the companies that actually care about their team, you know, those are, you get excited about that, you know, cool. chance to talk to them. Well, you, you touched on it. I mean, like every business, I mean, I've been, I've been, I've owned businesses for 20 years and, you know, I've sold products, I've, I've done marketing and all this other stuff. And the first question everybody asks, cause it's the, it's literally the million dollar question is, you know, what does everything cost? Everybody wants to know what does everything cost? Yep. And what you just said right there is vital because it doesn't matter what my stuff costs if I don't have the right solution that works for your need. So you can't put the cart before the horse. If I told you it was a dollar, but I didn't offer you anything, you'd be mad that it was a dollar. So I got to make sure you right. know you know what we're what we're doing. So yeah, that's a really great point for people that are listening to this. Is I know you want to know the answer. What's the golden number? What is it going to cost me to do service X or service Y? But unless the services are really what you need, and I'm sure you've run into instances where you sit down with somebody and say, Hey, look. Where you're at, Rick, you said it a minute ago, like right now you're not at this stage. Like you need to put a couple ducks in a row before we can get to the point where we could have this conversation. Right. And and that's where, you know, you're big, the, the, I don't want to sound negative, but like, you know, people that are looking to make a sale, like, I don't do that. Like I solve problems. Nobody wants to talk to the insurance guy unless they have a problem. Like this is not a sexy no. conversation. Like I know no. this, like I used to have a cool job. This is not it. But, um, but I know this stuff. So when the time comes, you actually want to sit down and talk to somebody like me, like you need, you got stuff you got to work on. Um, so those big, you know, the big guys will like, once they know that you're, you know, company below a certain size or you don't have this much of a budget, they don't want to talk to them. Right. They're not cool enough. They're not, they're not worth their, their time or money. But I, I like talking to them when they're at that stage, because now I can, I can be an advisor. I can be, you know, on their team and, and help them grow. And then, you know, I can still be there on their team when they have grown and get bigger. And now it is, you know, now when the big guys come around and start sniffing around, the company is going to give those guys the Heisman because I was right. there when they were, you know, you know, four or five people, you know, work in their board, their boardroom was a card table. Right. You know, it's, it's funny is I said, I, I've had multi-million dollar ad agencies. I've done advertising for, Dymo label makers, mechanics wear gloves, private airlines, Welch's fruit snacks, all these giant brands. And it was great. It was, you know, it was lucrative. Our agency did well. We had, you know, all this stuff. But what I do today is it's like you have skin in the game. Like you're helping a business grow. And when you see them get to that next level and you're like, you know what? Maybe it wasn't me that did it, but I'm a part of that wheel. Yeah. That helped it get bigger. That to me is way more satisfying than just calling up a chief marketing officer at Welch's and they say, "Oh, here we need X amount of media. Go buy it and give me." I mean, it pays the bills. Um, you know, it's not a big deal, but yeah, it's not as gratifying as watching a you know watching a company grow and, and build up from from a card table as their boardroom. Well, you have the right service and you have the right you have the right intentions. Like the money will find you. Right. You know, it's, there's there's plenty of business out there for everybody. You know, and, and it's, we're all, you know, we, if you're, if you're good at what you do, you're going to make a living, you know, but I'd rather, you know, you only get to live for so long. I'd rather enjoy what I do rather than open my laptop oh. in the morning and just, you know, Let's, no, I don't want to do that. I did it for 20 years. I worked in corporate financial services for large mm. insurance companies and all this stuff before tattoos, before a beard, before I can do any of that stuff, buttoned up, shirt and tie, the whole works. And I'll tell you, every morning I would wake up 
and it was like that Groundhog Day movie with Bill Murray mm -hmm. and just be miserable going through the mo and and I was good at what I did. I mean, I was good at it. So I just kept making more and more money. And then I got to a point where I'm like, I'm making so much money. How do I break away from this? And I needed some divine intervention. I mean, I needed the real estate market to crash in 20, 2008, 2009 yeah. for you know God to say, hey, listen, buddy, you hate this stuff you're doing. I'm going to take it away from you so that you now have to figure out how to sink or swim. So I'm not one of these. I talk to entrepreneurs all the time that were like, I went into work that day and I was like, you know what? No more. I'm just going to go out and do it myself. And I'm like, yeah, I couldn't do that. But yeah. sometimes you just need that little bit of push. So let yeah. me ask you, you kind of said, um, you know, how you used to have a cool job. So tell us a little bit about your story. I mean, when you were a young man hanging out, uh, doing your thing on the green streets, you were not thinking about selling insurance. No, I was uh, I was in the army for 23 years all total. So I did uh, I was a combat medic when I was enlisted, and then uh, went went back in, did ROTC, and went, you know became an officer. And then I was uh, what they call a combat engineer. So I got paid to jump out of airplanes, ride around tanks, blow stuff up. I like, guess that's and, fun. And, like I guess that was it's like you know 12 year old boys dream gig is like wait i get to light dynamite on fire with my cigar like really i have, I have a picture of that by the way yeah. um but uh but yeah it was great i mean i had a great time i got to you know go all over the world and 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 it was, it was awesome but like you get older you, you get a family you know it's time to it's time to hang up your spurs and get a real job and um when i got retired in 2014 and Nobody was hiring. Like all these jobs that we thought were supposed to be out here. Oh, these companies are going to fight to get you. You manage. Oh my God. Like none of that. They don't have that way. They don't know you. Just they'll, kidding. Hire, they'll hire some schmo in house with like, like a, a quarter of your resume of doing stuff because they know that schmo. Right. The so, devil they know. So now, I, now I know these things, Yeah. but, uh, but I kind of wandered into insurance. I didn't know anything about it. I never had insurance. I didn't need to. I was in the army. Like they right. take care of all that for you. Literally never had health insurance before that. Um, but, uh, I, I, you know, wandered into it, worked for a couple different companies, you know, while I was learning. And then I'm the guy that quit in the middle of a management meeting to do my own thing. Um, because like the company I was working for was just, uh, trying to keep it clean, had very poor integrity and, um, literally quit in the middle of a meeting and walked out, called one of my friends that does this and became an independent, started my own company in the parking lot. Um, 2018 had to think about it so i've been doing it on my own ever since i'm on my patio right now with the dog wearing shorts you know, <laughs> you know it's, it's funny is it, it's funny that uh you know that you ended up doing it like that like it's <clears throat> so many as sad as this is going to be there are so many companies out there that that like my my feeling was always this my reputation is the one thing that I have the opportunity to control. Can't control other people's response to my personality. I can't control any of that stuff. My reputation is the one thing I can control. Now, look, does everybody love everything about the way I do business? No, it's contracts. Sometimes things happen. Things don't always work out. It's not puppy dogs and rainbows. But the handling yourself with integrity, and, and, and I was always taught, Look, I'm going to be upfront with you and tell you what I do and how I do it. And this is what's going to happen. If you want to do business with me, great. I would rather lose business on the front end with somebody than even for a second have them think that I'm doing some type of bait and switch or a mislead or any of that stuff. So and the brutal. funny the funny thing is with the podcast. So I don't charge people for the podcast. For this initial podcast to meet business owners, I don't charge anybody for it. Do you know how many, how many times a week I have to reassure somebody? I'm not going to ask for your credit card. I'm not. Like, it just it, we live in such. Yeah. A, the whole point of that is we live in a society where it's full of businesses like that. Yeah. Well, you get to the step in somebody's marketing funnel where now all of a sudden the tactics change. Like, nope, uh, uh. And that it, hmm. it's just there's you don't have to be like that. You can do very well and have your word be good. And you don't have to, and I always joke, like, you know, I had about half a dozen concussions while I was in the army. My memory sucks. So like you asked me a question today and you ask me the same question tomorrow, the answer is going to be the same because I don't remember what I told you today. Right. The right answer is the right answer. I'm not, I'm not running a game on anybody. Like I don't, uh, you know, I don't have memory for that. So 
life's too short to be full of it and you're I, gonna get caught like why be that way exactly like i i tell people i said i'm just too dumb to lie to you i can't keep I, i'm not smart enough to keep lies straight you ask me a question i'm going to tell you how it is if if the answer is going to be the same it's the same answer i just don't have the bandwidth in my brain to have multiple that's why when i was single i could never date multiple women i just couldn't juggle it i would just mess up names i just start calling each other everybody's a different name so I, I can't even do that i'm not even good at doing that like it's terrible um so so all right so what you do i mean you, you definitely had a cool you know first act here you know now in this act it's a little bit more it's a little bit more vanilla we'll, we'll say vanilla is a fair term that's a good word what do you when you're not crunching insurance numbers and talking to small businesses about getting their 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 um, staff insured? What do you like to do to let off steam? What do you what's the fun activity? Oh gosh, let's see. I do um, like get hobby stuff. Like during the shutdown, I started doing like carpentry, woodworking. Um, I did something I always wanted to do and did uh, stand up a little bit, and uh, that's. Uh, terrifying but super Damn fun it, Jay, that's that's where that's where uh side splitters yeah were you at the rotary one yeah that's my rotary i'm not, I'm not the not the morning one the the noontime one yeah no I, I i know half the people in there i love what a small world it is yeah that was not my that's best so work but uh but that was a good time well you did you do the second one when for the insurance when the insurance guy did it yeah you were there for that one too my big buddy the meathead came and did his terrible dark Twisted comedy. Were you there for that one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. That Jay, I knew it. I couldn't, I couldn't place it. That I, yeah. when I was hanging out with you at that meeting the other day, I'm sitting there across from you, going, "I know this guy. I know this guy. I know this I guy." Wasn't, I just wasn't swearing enough in the meeting, so that's probably what. That's probably what it was. Me too. Yeah. I, it's part of it. It's just adjectives. But I'm from the Northeast. We. It's just an adjective to to kind of yeah. enhance enhance a word. So yeah. okay. So the comedy. All right. I've definitely seen the comedy. The woodworking. Yeah. Do you have like a do you, did you go out and buy all the, the crap that you need? Like, did you have a band saw, a table saw, or are you just doing it by hand? Yeah, well, a little bit. Like, as 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 you do a new thing, you get a new tool, you know, so it's kind of an excuse to buy new toys. But nothing crazy. Um, I, I know what exists out there, and I know what my garage could look like, and I'm so I'm very well behaved. But um, could spend a lot of money. Could spend well, a lot, a lot of money on that. But stuff. if I don't need it, and I'm not going to – I'm only going to use it once a year, I'm not going to buy it. Like, I'm, I'm pretty – you know, or I, I have a friend I could borrow one from, but uh, but I built like bunk beds for my kids. Like, like oh, that's cool. Like they're like legit. Like you know, you could land a helicopter on. They're not gonna fall down. Yeah, they're they're gonna stay with the house forever because they're that like built heavy, sturdy. Well, it's, yeah, but they can take them with them when they move out. Like so, it's you know, like you know, good you know, solid stuff. But you know, just like all kinds of odds and ends. You know, just gifts for people, housewarming presents for people, and it, it just it's there's no physical product to what I do. You know, like at the end of the day, you get an insurance card or you get a, you know, folder full of yeah. paper, but there's no like Tangible. there. I did yeah. this thing for you and now you you paid this money. You have this thing, whereas you build something, you know, it's that, that piece of furniture theoretically could be there long after I'm gone. OK, so two furniture stories quickly. Number one, in wood shop in 10th grade. So I'm 51. So that's 1987, 88. Mm -hmm. I built my parents for Christmas a drop leaf table. Nice. I kid you not, that drop leaf table is sitting in my living room as my TV stand because I moved into a new place. And I didn't want to go buy a TV stand. So it's held up. It's 35 years old. The thing's held up. I don't know how great the craftsmanship is. It's moved with me from New Jersey to Atlanta, from Atlanta. I mean, everywhere. That's one. And then number two, one of the companies I worked for when I owned my ad agency in Atlanta was a company called Festool. Have you ever seen their equipment? Uh, it is, I'm... Jay, when I tell you it's the type of stuff that you could literally do it in your lanai, it's designed to have dust free. So you, oh. it, everything is connected to vacuums with central. I mean, the stuff is, re, it's like the Rolls Royce. Like I grew up on Craftsman, the stuff you'd get at That's... Sears, you know, yeah. for like two ninety nine, And this stuff's like nine grand for these crazy things. Oh, yeah. I never in my life, when you say what your garage could look like, when I would see this stuff, when I was doing their advertising, I was like, holy crap, I wish I was into woodworking because this stuff is really yeah. cool. You could go all out with that stuff. Yeah, it's I've been enough down the military, you know, gear rabbit hole to what you can spend on things or what things cost. Like I know how not how quickly that can get out of hand. So I've, I've gotten good at resisting the urge to go nuts on everything else because, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't need a $9,000 saw. You know, you know, 
five hundred dollars all I'll do as long as I don't cut anything off. Cut your okay. finger off. Yeah, you're gonna cut your finger off just as easily nine grand or nine hundred. Doesn't yeah. matter. You're gonna snip it. Yeah. It's funny. I got all these stupid hobbies that and I'm not even into them like a lot of people. Like I have a Jeep. Okay, Pete, you see what people do to Jeeps. It's ridiculous. You can make no, it anyway. I have, I have one too, yeah. I have a Harley. I've spent thousands upon thousands of dollars on that thing, and I have an 89 Fox Body Mustang GT convertible. This thing is the Are money you, pit. You're it's just like trying. Ridiculous. You're just trying to, to, to kill yourself with these hobbies. It's a midlife crisis, Jay. It's a midlife crisis. I'm 51. It started at about 49-ish. Um, I made a whole bunch of money on GameStop stock and wanted to buy a car. <laughs> I didn't make enough to buy a Corvette. I made enough to buy an old Mustang. So I, um, but yeah, dude, I got all these things that I just, I, and the Harley was the worst. I mean, I've had that thing for 23 years. And in uh, the beginning, you just go nuts. Like you just like every little thing, but it's well, been the same now forever. All you need to add to the full house is go buy a boat. A boat would be the next thing. That would yeah, be the next like thing. You already I, got all the black I, holes. I got everything else. Black. I got the trifecta. I got the tri- so how about that? Are, are you a fisherman guy? Do you go and do that? No, or you I, I, like I like being underwater. Like I, I dive, but uh, fishing, like I, 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 I didn't go work. hunting. I didn't go hunting until yeah. I retired from the army. Like I, I figured I got enough of that at work. I didn't need yeah, to do it. Yeah, you don't fun. need to do it in a spare time. But, uh, but since then, it's fun. I enjoy it. Um, the pigs don't shoot back, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, and I do uh, crab maga with my youngest, my thirteen year old. So we go do that. Okay. Together. And uh, so is that said, something you picked up in the military and kind of carried it through after you got out, or was it a different? A little bit, a little bit, but like, um, one of my friends that I was in went to school with and was in the army with has a place here in, in local. And um, I wanted something I could do to stay active because I'm a little bit older than you, but you gotta, you gotta keep moving, you know, yeah. you keep doing stuff. And um, you know, my, my youngest, we do it together, and it's you know, it's good father son time, and you know, the, he gets to see, you know, I'm struggling with it you know and are not naturally good at it and so he, you know we, we can do it together perseverance yeah, yeah, yeah. It's teaching that lesson yeah and it's fun they get to go kick stuff so how many kids you have how many how many kids <laughs> do you and your wife have uh well we have the blended family of six so i came with four she came with two right. we don't know no more after that because i'm yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh and what are the age ranges uh i got uh 20 down to 13. I mean, so, that's a pretty good spread. I mean, it's, it's only seven car, years, but that's a lot of concentrated, yeah, concentrated car hormones. Car insurance, hell. Oh, I bet it is. I bet yeah. it is. I bet you're wishing you went into car insurance now. <laughs> uh, I know, yeah, I, I would, yeah, no, that sucks, I man. Would, I might. I'm going to start selling organs. So you have, so down to 12. So how many of them are actually behind the wheel? Let's see, 20, 18... 17 well permit for 17 year old 17 so i have Four. three active drivers so three full full licensed drivers and two permits wow the permits I mean, don't cost you any extra until they actually get their full yeah, license yeah, yeah 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 so what um so do you have like a valet lot in your driveway like how do you manage the vehicle stuff well, we got Nazi HOA too, so it, yeah. it's like if you park on the street, they leave a letter on there, and then they say like it's I, I hate that. Yeah, so I'd rather do the Taliban the HOA, um, but uh, it's it it requires very careful parking and, and, and scheduling. Yeah. Like, who's going to be the who's one out at first? The, end of the driveway? Who's going getting up the earliest? And then yeah. school starts this week, and and so you know who's got to leave first and blah. so and then what about uh yeah and school's going back right uh the 14th or something like that so soon yeah and yeah. where where are you guys located you're not are you in new tampa yeah like it's it, it, it it's all kind of if you if you stand on this corner it's new tampa if you turn this way it's lutes you turn 45 degrees more it's land of lakes you turn another 45 gotcha. degrees west yeah, of chapel yeah, yeah. so it's so right like county line bruce b downs because i know. was because yeah because i was thinking because when I was, I think when we, when I saw you at the side splitters thing, I thought, I thought you were part of the, the morning uh, rotary club, like the, whatever they call them, the okay. daybreak group or whatever yeah. it is, that group. No, I'm the, um, the satellite one now. It's the they satellite group. Right, right, yeah. Right. So, so it's like the happy hour, the, 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 the younger kids. And the, the younger, uh, when, when the I'm one kids. of the younger kids in rotary, you know, they're Me older. too. Listen. Yeah. Although our group's pretty good in Wesley Chapel. I mean, the stuff we're doing to build the house uh, in Pasco yeah. County is really good. And 
Um, no, I love helping out with that. That's that's yeah, definitely it, really that's a really good initiative. And if anybody's listening and you don't know what's going on, the Wesley Chapel Rotary, with help of a lot of other Rotary clubs in the area, is building a, a home for victims of human trafficking in an undisclosed location. Like there's only a handful of people even in our club that know where this place is for the protection of these these women who have been trafficked and they've been used and, and given them away a bridge back to life. So it's a pretty cool initiative that we got involved in a couple of years ago. But uh, a lot of the other Rotary clubs have been super, super supportive of it. Um, have you ever gone up to Hats and Horses up in Dade City for that event? Uh, I have not. I've done uh, I've done some of the wild game dinners for the different clubs, but I haven't done the uh, the Hats and Horses. Hats and Horses is pretty cool. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, just a Kentucky Derby thing. You know, I mean, that usually I've sponsored that one. That one's a good one. It's just fun. Like, it's auctions and gambling, oh. and it's pretty cool. Um, so... You know, as we kind of start to wrap this up a little bit, I mean, I guess. Um, just time. Yeah. I'm, you, you broke up there for a second. So the one thing you want people yeah, listening right. to this to know about doing business with you and your company, what's the what's the reason they have to call Echo Benefit Solutions? Well, it, it, it doesn't cost anything to get an answer. You know, if you have if you have insurance and you want to to see if you can save some money and have it cost less, or you don't understand how it works, um, that's a good call. If uh, for people that are turning 65 the next year or so, they're getting literally pounds of mail every week, direct mail marketing about Medicare. And um, it's, 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 it's overwhelming. And so like having somebody to be able to explain that to them, it, you know, and not make them feel like they're being, uh, you know, set up to sign over their house or something. Yeah. Uh, like it's just I, I like taking things that are complicated and making them simple and and make like by the end of the meeting, they're laughing or the end of the phone call, they're laughing. And they're like that they're they were ever so worried about it. Um, but, yeah, people that are getting ready to turn 65 is is, is a fantastic, um, you know, uh, conversation to have. And then, um, you know, people that are pulling their hair out at open enrollment, you know, that, cause that's coming up in November. Yeah. Um, that's a you know, those are always great conversations, too. I think the hard part about open enrollment is you don't want the window to be so open that it's just going on forever, right. but it can feel like it's a pretty tight window. You're getting all this crap leading up to it. Then the op window opens and then it's like quick, make a decision. So I guess the big thing is like, look, if you're coming up on that time and you're getting a little overwhelmed, that's the time to call Echo yeah. Benefit Solutions with that. 100%. Yeah. And then what's the best way? I mean, is it your cell phone, your email, your website? If I need to get a hold of you because I've just gotten 75 postcards in my mailbox, what's the best way to do it? The um, email is j j y at echobenefitsolutions.com or I'm on Facebook, um, echobenefitsolutions.com as well. Like, you know, PM on that. Um, like that's, those are some of the best ways. And plus it's, you know, you can, if you're not ready to do anything now, you can go take a look. There's reviews. I put all kinds of stuff up. I do my own, you know, video content and articles and stuff just to kind of help either, you know, keep people informed, make them laugh a little bit, you know. Um, but uh, it's, uh, that's the easiest place. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the important thing, right? Like this stuff is heady stuff. Like it's life decision type stuff. So I think the bringing in the, the levity and kind of, you know, not to make a joke of it, because obviously you're not going to make a joke no. of it, but to make it a little I'm bit not. more lighthearted so people don't feel like they're just getting this. Like you said, I mean, there's a lot of the one thing coming to Florida in 2019 to take care of my folks. The one thing that became very apparent to me early on taking over all their stuff is there are so many people out there that literally take advantage. Like elder abuse is a real, real thing. I mean, I won't mean the car company. My, my parents got put in a four-year lease on a car where they paid for that car where they could have bought it for less money than they paid for the lease and had to give it back. Like stuff like that goes on, people. So if you are looking for someone that you don't have to worry about them, um, they're just going to treat you right. They're going to treat you like you're a part of their family. Right. Jay is the guy to call. He's funny. I mean, he's not as funny as I thought he was going to be when he got up on stage, but it wasn't as bad as it could have been. It was a tough crowd. That's a tough room to, to perform in, to be honest with you. Well, that's the wonderful thing about stand-up is that it's there. Sometimes you go up and I anything you say is hilarious and you are just on. And there are some times where your first joke goes off like a fart in church. And yep. then it's then it's just like, all right, well, let's let's see how deep I can dig this hole. 
Well, and, the hard um, part, it's all good experience. The hard part about that place is in a normal comedy club, you're on the stage and there's tables all around you. So you almost, even though you can see the people a little bit, you can kind of feel the energy. That room is like an auditorium and you're up there on that stage and you can't see anybody. And mm -hmm. like, you think you're bombing, but like after I listened to my setback, I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, because I left the stage and I'm like, I missed like three jokes I wanted to tell. And yep. um, I walked off and I was pissed. And then when I went and listened back to it later, I'm like, all right, it wasn't as good as I, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was, but it wasn't as, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't great, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it was because you yeah. can't really get that feedback. But no, dude, you, you've been there, right? Like you go out, well, when you're single, you go out to like a bar and everything you say to the girl, the first time you say, some days you just have it and it's working and the charm is kicking. And then other nights you're like sticking your foot in your mouth, spilling a drink on yourself. Or it's, it's bad. Yeah. So you just kind of yeah. have to take the good with the bad and start over again, I guess. Yep. Yeah. I, uh, I'm working on my next set for that. Hopefully it'll be a little bit better than the last time. Yeah. Well, and it's when you only do that set once, you don't really get a chance to get any better with it because you know, yeah, the, yeah. the people that do it regularly or professionally, they do the same set over and over again and they sharpen it and then right. it, it, it kills. Whereas you know, we'll go do five minutes and it'll be, you know, it'll be, you know, it'll be a hundred or it'll be a zero. It won't be an 85. Well, look, I'm not going to make excuses for my set. What I will tell you is this. I was told to prepare about seven, eight minutes because mm -hmm. there wasn't as many people the last time. Right. I prepared about seven, eight minutes. I practiced the cadence. I did all that. And then as I got there, they're like, you only got five minutes. And I'm like, yep. all right, what do I cut out of this and still make it work and not mess it all up? I should have just done the eight minutes and left it alone. But that that really threw me off going up there. I'm like, oh, how am I going to cut this? So it is what it is, man. Listen, I do appreciate you being on with us today. It was great to finally put the my brain cells functioning to put two and two together Guys, if you're listening to this, definitely reach out to Jay, Echo Benefit Solutions. You can find him on Facebook, Jay at EchoBenefitSolutions.com. Jay, thanks so much for being on the Good Neighbor Podcast. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thanks for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Pasco. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to GNPPasco.com. That's GNPPasco.com or call 813 922 3610.